Now let's see how a monopolist reaches equilibrium under price discrimination. We have two markets before us. Market A and Market B. We can see that the market A is high price market and market B is low price market because we can see that the demand curve is inelastic, relatively inelastic in market A and the demand curve is relatively elastic in market B. B. You can see that the demand curve is steeper in market A. Thus, we can say that it is inelastic and the demand curve is flatter in market B. So, it becomes elastic. Now, when the demand is inelastic, the monopolist would try to charge the customers at a higher price because a change in price will not bring that big a change in demand. So even if he rises his prices, the demand won't fall much. So he'll try to charge a higher price when the demand is inelastic and but where the demand is elastic, he'll not try to change the price much. Sorry. He'll not try to change the price much because a slight change in price will bring a higher change in demand. So he tries to keep the price low there. So market A becomes the high price market and market B becomes the low price market because of the elasticities of demand. Now he has three things to decide. How much to produce, how to distribute between the two markets and what price to charge in the two markets. How much to produce is generally answered by the question or by the equation rather MC equals to MR where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue he will produce that much. But the problem here is he has two different markets and the revenue or the marginal revenue from both the markets is different. So what he will try to do is try to distribute the goods in such a way that in both the markets he is getting maximum profit. So distribution would be in such a way that the profit is maximum taken both the markets together. Now the third question is what price to charge in low in the two markets. So the market where the elasticity is less it is inelastic he will charge a higher price and the market where the elasticity is high, he'll charge a low price. So we've answered all the three questions now. Now let's see how does he reach the equilibrium. The important points to note is MR of both the markets should be same. For whole output MR should be equal to MC. and the price is higher in market A where demand is less elastic. We have discussed that MR in both the markets should be equal that is marginal revenue 
in both the markets market a and market rip market b should be equal now the point is why should it be equal in both the markets for the monopolist to achieve the equilibrium he should see to it that the revenue the additional revenue that he is getting from either of the markets is same if it is not same he will keep on shifting the products from the market where the marginal revenue is less to the market where the marginal revenue is more so only when the marginal revenue in both the markets is same he will stop to shift the products we know that for the total output mc should be equal to mr marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost we've already discussed this we've also discussed this point price in market a should be higher because the elasticity is less and price in market b should be lower because elasticity is high there now let's see how the monopolist reaches the point of equilibrium we can see that the demand curve is steeper for market a and demand curve is flatter for market b and this is the marginal cost curve again this is the marginal cost curve for the markets a and b we will not consider the total market as yet so where is mc meeting mr in market a at this point let me name this as e1 so this is the optimum quantity in market b mc is meeting mr at this point let me name this as e2 so this is the optimum quantity in market 2 now what is happening is we can see that mr in both the markets is equal because his cost for both the markets is same mc curve in both the markets remains the same and when he is at equilibrium he can see that both the points of equilibrium e1 and e2 mr is same on those points so the first key point gets satisfied there mr is same at both the markets we also see that for whole output now whole output can be seen in total market this is the total market here this is the marginal cost and where is the marginal cost meeting the marginal revenue at this point so we can see that it still remains the same the marginal revenue remains the same and here the mc is equal to mr for the whole output thus we can say that the monopolist has reached the equilibrium level he is at equilibrium when he is producing q3 units and let me tell you q3 will be equal to q1 plus q2 whatever he is selling in both markets will be equal to q3 he is selling q1 in the first market 
Q2 in the second market and you take a sum of both you will get Q3 because it is the total market the sum of both the markets but now let's try to derive the curves the demand curve and the marginal curve for the total market you can see that the demand curve is starting let's say at point A in market A and at point B in market B. So I'll just take this thing ahead. So you can see that in the total market the demand curve initially takes the shape of the demand curve in the market A. The total demand curve takes the shape of the demand curve in the market A because in this region, in this region what is heavier, what is impacting is the market A because there is no demand curve in this region here. So the demand curve in the total market takes the shape of the demand curve in the market A. But what happens after this point? Suddenly market B comes into existence and it has its demand curve which is flatter. So now the demand curve becomes flatter and it takes the shape of market B. And it takes the shape of market B. So you will see there is a bend in the demand curve when there is price discrimination. In the total market you can see that there is a bend in the demand curve because the demand curve for the total market is the summation of the demand curves in the both market. So initially the demand curve in the total market is flatter or rather steeper and later on it becomes flatter because market B comes into picture now. So then it takes the shape of demand curve in the market B and because of this reason you will find that there is a bend in the demand curve because there is a change in the shape of the demand curve. So this is how demand curve is derived. Marginal revenue curve is also derived in the same fashion. Initially the marginal revenue curve takes the shape of the marginal revenue curve in the market A and then it takes the shape of the marginal revenue curve in the market B. So initially it is steeper and then it becomes flatter. So we have seen that the monopolist has reached the equilibrium in the total market by discriminating in the prices in market A and market B. We have also seen that the average marginal revenue that he gets from the total market is equal to the marginal revenue that he gets from the market A and the market uh, marginal revenue that he gets from the market B. So we can say that MR of A is equal to MR of B is equal to average market revenue. Market the marginal revenue that he gets from market A is equal to the marginal revenue that he gets from market B is equal to the average market revenue that he gets from the total market. So this is it. We are done with the topic monopoly and price discrimination under monopoly.